And now my impression of a foolish person watching black people on the television and changing channels. <gasps> black people in general are dangerous. Black people in general are entertaining. Soldier boy up in this. Oh, what did doodly blahly blahly blah. people are presidential. Obama, 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 Obama. Yeah. Hey, Charles, Charles, let me talk to you. I'm talking with Charles Ramsey. He's a neighbor. Uh, t walk me through again what happened this afternoon. You, were, you, you heard screaming. I heard screaming. I meet my McDonald's. I uh, come outside. I see this girl going nuts trying to get out of her house. So I go on the porch. Okay. I go on the porch, and she says, "Help me get out." I've been I'm, I've been in here a long time, so you know I figured it's a, a domestic violence dispute. So I opened the door, and I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she ran into a black man. Charles, thank, thank you for being there, man. Charles Ramsey, a neighbor, heard the screaming, took action, went and did what he needed to do. The rest is unfolding before us here on CMR. I'm going to send it back to you. <laughs> I knew something was a, was a problem because a white girl was hugging a black man. That guy is so funny. Detective Gregory Cook says, Charles, do you know who you rescued? I said... Did you see how scared he got when he heard the sirens? Detective Gregory Cook says, Charles, do you know who you rescued? I said, He was like, uh oh, I'm a black guy and the police might treat me corruptly because that's what happens in this culture. Meanwhile, imagine what's not told in that story. That last guy, that's Charles Ramsey, Chuck Ramsey, and he's famous right now because he helped some girls escape. I won't even go into the actual story that matters to the mainstream. He helped some girls escape from a house. And now he's famous for not only helping them, but being so entertaining and silly in his interviews and acting so strange. Meanwhile, he's the descendant of slaves. And we do live in a slave state still. And as Plato said in the Republic, in a bad society, people with good constitutions will do poorly. In a good society, people with good constitutions will do well, and vice versa. If you're in a good society, people with bad constitutions will do poorly, and if you're in a bad society, people with bad constitutions will do well. Simply put, people like Chuck Ramsey, you're going to start realizing more and more, are not some exceptional person. You get to choose what channel you're on now. Do I want to watch... And the black thing is just an example. Do I want to watch a dangerous black guy? Black people are dangerous. A silly, entertaining black guy? Oh, they're entertaining. A presidential black guy? And on and on. White guys, guys in general. What kind of caricature do you want to see? Meanwhile, you're going to see more and more that Charles Ramsey is not some exceptional person. That that is the character of most black men you will come across, most men you will come across, any of the worst depictions you see of people, those are usually blown up exceptions. But you're taught to stay divided and conquered, especially in order to pretend that the status quo works. You walk past Charles Ramsey and you never saw him as a hero before. If he was 
homeless on the street, you'd say, well, you know, you must have done something. The system works, so it couldn't be that. And then we move on. Even me bringing up the slavery thing and him being a slave to say, oh, we're over that. Lincoln freed the slaves. You know that war that was fought in 1865 for the benefit of black people? Not to keep all the power in the North where they had slave states anyways and they were terrorizing the South. Yeah, Lincoln freed the slaves. And then we had a civil rights movement, which has served nothing more so than to pretend, to allow people to pretend that you were post-racial and, you know, problem solved. There was slavery and now, uh, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead, you can, you can have our drinking fountains with us. These facades of the status quo works now. If Charles Ramsey is homeless on the street, well, he earned it. Meanwhile, you're going to see more and more heroic people among the demographics that you were taught to justify their misery. Homeless black men, homeless men in general. You're going to realize, wow, Chuck Ramsey is a hero. And clearly, he's a drug-addicted derelict who can't afford dental care. That's how we treat heroes or people with a heroic mindset. Keep it in mind, for every person who's justifying the status quo as it is, justifying walk right past miserable derelict people, and then wondering, why, why do we have rapists? Or how can we make the streets more safe for white women, for example? Rapists attackers, white women, all these kind of things. What can we do to improve this? I'll tell you what you could do is free up the heroic minded people who are currently crushed by the system as it is. And again, even me saying that people are going to, there will be plenty of mindset thinking, well, no, he's exceptional. The status quo generally works. Our heroes are acknowledged. And the bad people are the ones that are homeless and out. More and more, you're going to see that's not the case. More and more, you're going to see that, like Plato said, if you're good in a good system, you do well. Bad in a bad in a good in a bad in a good system, you do poorly. But we have a bad system where good people can be heroes, and maybe they get acknowledged. Maybe they maybe you see them doing that heroic act, or maybe they just rot away and die like so many other Chuck Ramseys. Meanwhile, in this system, if you tell Good lies or bad truths, that dictates where you are. Just consider Barack Obama, that hero of so many garbage-ass liberals. Barack Obama was elected because he wasn't the war hawk. That was McCain. So Barack Obama got into power, escalated all of Bush's wars, escalated the Patriot Act, indefinite detentions, the suspension of habeas corpus, which means torture, telling all of the right lies. It doesn't matter if you're black or white in this culture. It never did. It matters if you're obedient and if you tell the right lies to keep people believing in the status quo. So Barack Obama tells the right lies. Who tells the wrong truths? Bradley Manning. Currently, he's a white guy being tortured in prison for telling the truth about Obama's wars. But back to Chuck Ramsey, the hero. People that you don't hear about, and you're welcome to look into it. Kelly Elementary. Look up Kelly Elementary. I'm not going to mention any names, but there was a shooter on that campus and you'd never heard the story because three men stopped that shooter. You've heard of Adam Lanza. You haven't heard of David O'Rourke. Of course you haven't heard of David O'Rourke. Who is he? He didn't kill a bunch of kids. He tried to. Men saved the day. But just like Chuck Ramsey saved the day for these three women, he's not even in the stories now more and more. More and more, he's not in the stories. It's three women were kidnapped by a man, two men. And so the status quo works. Fear men. Women are victims. And meanwhile, where's Chuck Ramsey? Oh, he's silly. You should see how he acts. He said it was something like, uh, I knew there was a problem when a white girl trusted a black man. I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. <laughs> Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she run to a black man. Charles, thank, thank you for being The subtext is because I live in a culture where I'm tr distrusted constantly as a black man. And so when someone actually trusted me, I know they needed something. When a white girl trusted me, she needed something. Keeping in mind, if it was not a heroic circumstance, he'd have just been some 
crazy black guy talking nonsense. Oh, come on. This again, white people like you, they, they would hug you, but you know, we just don't have the time. We're over here doing this. If he had mentioned what he mentioned about, he knew he, there was trouble when the white girl came up. If it was anything except for him being a hero, people would have said he's a completely insane person, racist person, and all that. But meanwhile, this the school shooting that you didn't hear about because it didn't happen because men saved the day. You don't hear of that as well. Three men overcame one man. Generally, you can trust men. Wow, there are so many heroic black people around. Generally, it's not it's not safe to assume that a black person can't be trusted. Of course, you should still judge people based on their merit, but this is not about whether or not you look at a black person, they're probably a hero or probably a criminal. It's about believing in the status quo and walking past these people who are miserable, who are stuck in their own sort of prison of the culture, homeless people, for example, and walking right past them. You are no Chuck Ramsey when you do that. And most people do that when they're around it. All right here in San Diego, there's a lot of homeless people lining the streets of downtown. People walk right past it. If Chuck Ramsey had the mindset of those self-righteous people who pretend that the status quo works, Chuck Ramsey would have walked right past that woman who was screaming, saying, well, you know what? She's probably in a bitch or something. And just left her be. More and more, that's what this culture deserves. It deserves the people it says should be protected. Women, for example. White women, for example. They deserve to be passed by when they have problems. The Chuck Ramseys of the world need less and less to actually help out, they need to get their own selves in order and solve their own problems. That's going to be more and more what it turns into. Ideally, we have this great culture where people help each other and all this, but I tell you this much. If Chuck Ramsey had been in that house screaming to get out, those white women and the Mexican girl, the ones that were in the, the house, if they never had been in that situation, if they were just random average white woman or Mexican woman, they would not have helped Chuck Ramsey. Not at all. So the point is, media is going to feed you the line of things are fine as it is. Media is an arm of government and the status quo to tell you, you know what, people are in their places and it all makes sense. Last I'll say about it is this. You got the Chuck Ramsey's doing heroic things. You got real issues facing a lot of people, but speaking specifically of, of black slave descendants in the United States. What the media does with that is it creates a fantasy with no less than two points. One of them is that Trayvon Martin type stories that are made up, fabricated stories, that those are the issues. As if there aren't any real issues, they have to make up stories. They have to doctor audio of George Zimmerman. They have to pretend George Zimmerman's white when he's closer to a black guy than a white guy. He's a Peruvian half Peruvian and he doesn't look like a white guy unless you're trying to feed a media line. So they make up those stories as if there's not any real stories to go by. And then they make up the media and the status quo and the powers that be and all that. They make up the black leaders to solve those real stories, the Trayvon Martin stories. And who are those made up black leaders? The Jesse Jacksons, the Al Sharptons, those kind of garbage people who are worse than useless, counterproductive to any real meaningful change. So the media does those two things to preserve the status quo, no less than those two things. Making up stuff, like the Trayvon Martin case, making up leaders like garbage Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. Meanwhile, there are real situations facing people in our culture, but speaking specifically of black people. Audrey Pott committed suicide, she's a white person, it matters. Meanwhile, that same week, as I mentioned in another video, about a half dozen black and Mexican people died in Chicago. But they're not a cute white chick, so you didn't hear about it. These girls were found. They had been kidnapped. They were there for 10 years. The media is not even touching the fact. No one is asking the question, as far as I know. Why didn't they just leave? They had no, no time to at some point. We have to understand Stockholm Syndrome, this, that, and the other thing. Let me tell you something about black people and the way that they raise their kids. White people will raise their daughters to be weak and obedient. 
Sometimes black people will do that, but more and more they raise them, more often they raise them with strength and a sense of self because you can't survive as a black person in this culture without strength and a sense of self. So while white people are raising their kids just to be obedient and just follow, black people are raising their kids to be relatively strong and with a sense of self. So we compare the three kidnapped women and the, J the J.C. Dugard case, which is coming up, people are mentioning that, the girl that was kidnapped and was held hostage for 15 years or something like this, and the Elizabeth Smart case where attractive white girl went missing and then they found her wandering around with her captors. Compare all that to, I don't remember the girl's name, but I think it was in Atlanta, Georgia, a little black girl. She was four or seven years old. It only came to light that she'd even been kidnapped because it was so interesting. She escaped. It was a four or seven year old. She escaped. She did this. She did that. She climbed through a window. She got out. Meanwhile, people want to talk about Stockholm Syndrome among white female kidnapped people. Meanwhile, the whole culture inculcates Stockholm Syndrome. Stockholm Syndrome being identifying with your oppressor. No, the oppressor is the kidnapper, and she identifies with the kidnapper. No, the oppressor is the person that teaches you to be a weak-minded, controllable coward. And so, simply put, white people are more and more set up to be that weak, controllable coward that somebody can exploit. But that doesn't make you feel good, so we'll pretend that doesn't happen. Meanwhile, a very similar atmosphere was created in Stalinist Russia. The late, great... Christopher Hitchens often had religious people, he was an atheist, religious people would say to him, atheism has done the worst of the 20th century, look at Stalinist Russia, and they mentioned Pol Pot and, and Nazism. But when they would touch on Stalinist Russia, it was a atheist state. Hitchens would point out that preceding, before the atheist situation, they had centuries of very religious rule. And what religious rule brings you is credulous, obedient pawns. And so that's fine because they're being credulous and, and obedient about Jesus. And then all you have to do is just change who the leader is. And then you have credulous, obedient pawns serving Stalin. So just like the white, controllable girls become easy prey because they have no sense of self and no strength, and no wherewithal to escape, 10 years of not being able to escape. Well, let's make all kinds of justifications. There's this very interesting thing about how white girls aren't raised with a sense of self and with a sense of self-preservation and with a mind towards being able to escape if they're locked away. Elizabeth Smart is the best example of this, where she's roaming around in public of course, you know, really, the, the fact remains that she might have even wanted to be with them. That is a whole other story about people wanting to control their daughters, even against their daughter's wishes. Uh, but Stalinist Russia became what it became because of the credulousness and obedience inculcated via religion. Likewise, white victims, uh, white female victims of kidnapping become what they become because of the credulous weakness inculcated by society at large. This is a socialization. And heroic people like Charles Ramsey become the rotten teeth, derelict, funny people they become talking about race relations in an interview that's about kidnapping because they are in a system that pretends we're post-racial and pretends the status quo works and pretends if now and again, you acknowledge some heroic black person who's in a miserable situation. And we've seen more and more of this in the United States. The black homeless guy that kept the woman's wedding ring when she had given it to him on accident. You're just going to keep seeing more and more of this. And then you're going to see things like Barack Obama, 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 telling lies to get people into war. And you're going to see more and more police corruption of black cops, but especially white cops. You're going to realize the status quo really doesn't work. Feel free to shoot the messenger, feel free to go back to sleep, and feel free to laugh at Chuck Ramsey and think, oh, he's so funny, but seriously, what, what about those white girls? I sure hope they're okay.
for the 10 years they were trapped and apparently they, they came out in good health so things weren't that bad they might have better health than Chuck Ramsey for the 10 years they were locked away Chuck Ramsey was locked away also in a culture that raises heroic minded people to just say in all candor and honesty I knew something was wrong when a little pretty white girl ran into a black man's arms. Something is wrong here. Dead giveaway. Dead Charles, giveaway. Charles, thank you very Dead much. Dead giveaway. Thank you very much for your time. And either she homeless or she got problems. That's the only reason why she ran to a black man. Charles, thank, thank you for being I knew there must have been a problem because white girls came up and wanted to be around me, a black person. So they must have needed something bad because they would never do that. Normally, they would either hate, despise, or fear me.